Hi everyone, I'm going to be explaining how to um, effectively add audio into Google Slides and I'm going to show you some steps today that can help save you some time. So one of the first things that I can tell you to do is go into your drive and you want to create a new folder. And when you create a new folder, I told my teachers to create hashtag audio. And I told them it wasn't because I was trying to be trendy. The reason why is because if you add the hashtag in front, then it will default towards the top of your Google Drive. Now, once you have that created, um, you are going to have this folder and I'm going to go ahead and double tap on it. Now, inside of mine, obviously, um, I've already got a bunch of recordings in here. So um, the first thing that you need to do once you get inside of that is you're going to actually um, take a look and hit this drop down menu and we're going to change our sharing settings. And the nice part about this is that once we change our sharing settings, then you won't ever have to go back in there and change it again. Now, kind of ignore what I have up here and we're going to go to the word advanced. And when I tap on it, I'm going to come up here to the word change. When you first create the folder, it's going to say private only for you, which is very common. I get a lot of teachers that ask me questions and they will say, why is it always having people request access? And I said, it's because you did not change your sharing settings. Now, if you were just sharing something within your own school district, then you can select that like what I have here. Since I share out so much on Twitter and in other platforms, I always keep mine at on anyone with a link so that that way I'm not going to get bombarded with people asking for requests to be able to um, listen to the recording. So once you're done with that, you're going to click save and then you're going to click done. Now, once we have this folder set up, I'm going to show you a great online tool that I like to use, and it's just called OnlineVoiceRecorder.com. So I can literally go into here, I can record my voice, whatever I want to say. When I hit stop, I'm actually going to see the sound wave, and it has some basic editing tools if I want to crop it out here. No, it doesn't have like splicing and dicing. This is a free tool, people. Um, so when I'm done with that, of course, if I want to hear it, whatever I want to say, okay, um, it can play it back for you. If I don't like it, I can just X out of it and re-record it. But now I'm going to save it. So now that I save that, it's downloading onto my computer, which I'm on a Chromebook right now. And then I'm going to go back to that file folder. So when I do a two finger tap, now I can upload files. So when I upload files, I can go right here into recent and I'm gonna notice that MP3 file. That's what I always tell my teachers. Now, once I add the file, I'm gonna click it and then select open and then it's going to add it into this file folder. Now you're going to notice on here that I have a lot in my file folder. Um, one bit of advice that I always give my teachers is go ahead and name the recording. So that way, don't be like Nadine and have a million of these that all say online voice recorder. When I get in a pinch and I'm in the middle of needing the audio quickly, I simply um, toggle from here into a Google slide, which I'm gonna go into the one that I'm working on right now. And once I have that file in that file folder, I can go into insert audio and the most recent recording is going to pop up. So I usually tell people when you're gonna do your recordings, then go ahead and place them on the slide. So I'm going to select it. And if I hover over it, I can see that it has the same name. And then, when I, then whenever I um, click select, it's going to appear on the slide. Now, a few things that I wanna show you, you can actually enlarge it. You're gonna notice that my format options popped up. So when you're in present mode, it could actually go ahead and play automatically. Um, another cool thing with this is if I do that two finger touch again, 
I can actually go in here and replace the image. Um, I've seen several teachers that have gone in and they've changed this from a speaker into their Bitmoji and then directing the students to actually, when they tap on the Bitmoji, then they could hear their teacher talk. Now, one of the cool things about this, as I had said earlier, because we already have this file folder that has all the appropriate settings, every time that I do a recording on that online voice recorder, I can now dump it into this file folder and automatically all of the sharing settings change immediately to anyone with a link can view. And I had to explain to my teachers that it's not that they have access to the file folder. It simply means that when someone is going to tap on it, then they're going to be able to listen to the recording. So hopefully this little tutorial helped you out. Um, feel free to reach out to me if it did not. You can follow me on Twitter at Nadine Gilkison. Thank you.